Good morning, friends. Stephen Bernoon here with Israeli News Live, and uh, I am going several things this morning. We're going to be talking about the full armor of God, and uh, that's really what the message is this morning. It's not very long, but going to kind of go into some things, a little bit of shocking things, in fact, in regards to the full, full armor of God. But uh, I do want to take though quickly and. Also, look at a couple of news uh, pieces here with you. Things I'm going to really try to, later this evening, I will be going in depth over a lot of things that are happening in the world, bringing you up to speed on that. Excuse me, the Jerusalem Post uh, reporting why moving the Sinai Peninsula is the solution for Gaza's Palestinians, and of course, in their opinion, peace. I want to talk a little briefly about that. Also, ex CIA officer says, Ukraine is a, uh, uh, well, let me just pull up where he says this here on that there. Um, it's like a sinking ship is the way he, he refers to it. This is after, of course, Zelensky uh, is going out there telling the world 2024 is going to be completely different. Oh, wow, it's going to be so much better. And we're going to produce more weapons and bombs inside of Ukraine, and we're going to attack uh, Russia like never before. And of course, they're focusing on Crimea is where they're really focusing at. That's uh, Zelensky's great report there. And then uh, we get this uh, ex-CIA official that is saying, uh, even admits to Ukraine getting the F-16 fighter uh, jets, their pilots training in northern Europe, getting ready to take on uh, Russian uh, forces in the sky. Uh, that's going to end up causing a lot more deaths and a lot more F-16 shot down by Russia. So all that's going on and at the same time, Redacted, uh, they put in a, a post here about Redacted where they were taking in um, soldiers, or excuse me, uh, people kidnapping them off the streets and sending them to the front lines. I think we reported that before Redacted did because we were getting it directly from some of our friends there in Ukraine, what was going on. It's been quite a while back that we said that. Uh, but uh, I didn't know that Redacted was being called conspiracy theorist for saying that. Uh, but now he's reporting well, just, in the New York Times. But we Times then showed you the video proof that Ukraine was grabbing young men off the streets and forcing them to fight and die in the front lines. So we were conspiracy theorists and then Putin apologists. Well, I wonder what will be called now that the New York Times is now reporting the very same thing, that Ukraine is grabbing men off the streets and forcing them to fight and die. In a bombshell new piece from the corrupt New York Times, they call them people snatchers. An army of people snatchers are using harsh tactics to round up people in Ukraine and forcing them to fight and die. Someone else who's been called a Putin apologist for shedding light on this story is Larry Johnson, who is an ex-CIA analyst. And he joins us now. Larry, does it feel good to be vindicated by the New York Times? Yeah. Hey, it only took them 18 months to learn how to read and to uh, <laughs> comprehend a video. Right. I mean, the, the videos on this have been out since July of 2022. Right. And it, it, yeah. <clears throat> so and even before July of 2022, we were already speaking about this ourselves. Uh, so I just thought it was interesting. Now, I want to kind of go back to this um, article here on the Jerusalem Post there about uh, moving the Palestinians, why moving to the Sinai Peninsula as a solution for the Gaza Palestinians in this opinion piece there. They say it's because it's more spacious. You know, even in this aerial photo, and I don't know how well you guys can see my cursor here. you got to keep in mind, all right, Israel goes all the way down here to the tip of the Gulf of Aqaba, um, comes back up here. In fact, I'll tell you what, let me, let me take a photo. Maybe I could draw a line here for you. Uh, and then that way you could better see this. And let's see, does it give me the ability to do, no, that's arrows. Let's try it. No, that's a highlighter. Do, 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 do. Um, well, even as a highlighter, let's just try it as a highlighter, right? This area right here, we know this is all of Israel, right? That's Israel there going down. And then it kind of cuts back up over into here. And then Gaza's up here on this little strip of land here. 
If you notice when you're looking at that, though, you can see the fertile areas there, of course, in Israel where Gaza is able to plant their own food and things like that. You push them out here into the Sinai, and maybe, maybe, maybe just a little tiny portion, maybe right there of a little fertility. Other than that, uh, these poor people are going to be in... A uh, big old desert. No way to grow food or anything. Totally dependent, as they already are dependent, at the mercy of, of Israel as it is. So they'd be totally dependent on everyone just to be able to get food, water included, uh, because there would be no way for them to do anything. So very bad situation there when I see this. And of course, this has been the aim for a long time. Um... Uh, is to just do away with that area there, or, or do away with Gaza and force them out into the Sinai. Uh, anyway, so that kind of puts that that part there. I wanted to share that with you. Let's look at this. This is something that I've been thinking about, and I'm not, I haven't fully done everything on my research on the full armor of God, but I wanted to go ahead and share a little bit of this with you now. Uh, because I did come across something I found very fascinating. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So if you're wearing that full armor of God, it gives you more ability to be able to deal with everything that Satan throws at you. <clears throat> Goes on to say, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against the powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. The verse 12 is so provocative, and yet you may not realize how provocative it is in regards to the armor itself. So Paul tells you, because you need to be able to, he said, you need to put on the whole armor, so that you can stand against the wiles of the devil. Let, let me let me do something here for you guys. We need to really take, we need to pop up Esword here. I, I want you to look, because I'm no Greek scholar uh, by no means, but I, I do know that there's some interesting verbiage that goes on in here. Okay. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles. And uh, it says here that it is diversity, trickery. Uh, look at that too. While, while, excuse me. A while. Lie in wait. That is a bombshell in itself. The word wiles of the devil is also a lying in wait. Well, you might say, well, oh, Brother Steve, what does that mean? What does that got to do with anything? You know, as the old saying is, what's that got to do with the price of tea in China, right? Okay, let me show you what it is. Remember, if you call Genesis, what is it? Chapter 3, I believe it is. Uh, remember the fall that takes place? And when God comes down to the woman, uh, you know, he first goes to Adam. Adam blames it on his wife. He, uh, he curses the serpent. The woman talks about what the serpent did. Here it is right here, verse 16. And the woman, he said, now they put on there, I will greatly multiply thy pain and thy travail. Doesn't say that. Doesn't say that at all. Haraba uh, Arabe is to lie in wait. The great one. It literally means Haraba, which is the great one. Arabe that was lying in wait. He's the one that causes her the pain and travail. And it's actually a pain and, and sorrow of heart. 
God basically prophesying, knowing that the serpent, the one that was the great, he was called the great one because he was above all the beasts of the field. So he was the great one. <clears throat> but he was lying in wait for her, to ambush her, to attack her. And <clears throat> so you come back to Ephesians and we see here, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Because what? He's like an ambusher. He's that great one that's lying in wait. Then they go on to say, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. And by the way, again, if you want to look at some of these words right there in verse 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, archaea. That's where you get your word archons from. Against the powers and against the rulers of darkness and of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, Take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand with to withstand and in the evil day and in having done all to stand, stand therefore and having your, here's the first one, loins girt about with the truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Two things, and this is fascinating in itself, the first two things that you're to have on is one, you're to have your loins girded about. That word, I have it, I got it highlighted in there for you right there so you can see it. Pro, uh, procreative power. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? The procreative power. It's your midsection, but that's to be girt about with truth. You're to you're to to put on the armor there that protects you from that procreative power. And having on the breastplate over your heart of righteousness. So you guard knowing the knowledge of the truth of that procreative power. And therefore, your heart will know to do what's right. That, I mean, who would ever think to even consider that verse in that manner, right? Well, why would it even be written there? Well, okay, let's look again. You're not wrestling against flesh and blood. You're wrestling against principalities. You're rep the, the, the archons. Did you forget about Genesis 6 where the Fallen angels came down and procreated with the daughters of man and brought forth Nephilim, giants, by them. That's the truth of the procreative power. Okay? That's why you're to be girded about of the procreative power to know what, in other words, it's not that you're wearing a physical vesture, it's to know the truth about what happened with those principalities because that's who you're wrestling against. To know the truth about what they did. Just like in the case, let's just look at both of them real quick. Genesis, we'll go to Genesis chapter 6. All right. The sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. B'nai Ha'elahim et benot Adam ki tovot. Oh, Wow. Now, some people argue, oh, that's the sons of God. These are the good guys and everything. Well, you got to remember, fallen angels are fallen because they were good. But because of their sin, they fell out of favor with God. And, of course, if it's a created being, it's still created by God, right? You can't get around that. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always abide in man forever for that he also is flesh, therefore shall his days be 120 years. The Nephilim were in those days. Ha Nephilim, ha Yubaaretz. 
The Nephilim were in the earth or in the land in those days. Bayamim hachamim, hachem. Vegam achrekin ashari abo benechalim. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them. So, you know just from reading it there that it was the fallen angels. So, <clears throat> you're told immediately by Paul that you're not wrestling against flesh and blood. In other words, when you're battling something like that, those women were, they weren't just wrestling against flesh and blood. They were wrestling against the archons, just like it was in Genesis. So, he told them to put on the full armor of God that you might be able to withstand all the wiles of the devil. And by the way, that word, as we pointed out, wiles of the devil is lying in wait. That's what the Greek word was, right? There you go. Let's go back to it again. To lie in wait. Trickery. Deceivery. Lying in wait is like the lion crouching in the bush. You know, it's interesting that if you look at some of the uh, ancient texts that are out there, they're not biblical, but they're, you know, they're, they're well, they would consider them to be biblical, but I don't like to do that because it's not part of our canon, but nonetheless, you still have them written out there. And I've seen those out there to where the Satan himself was a lion headed serpent. Whoa. I wonder why we read in Genesis chapter 1 or chapter 3, the woman said, excuse me, and to the woman he said, the one lying in wait, not I will greatly multiply, doesn't say that. In fact, in fact, <clears throat> the word I will is not even written in there anywhere. So we only the yellow part I have highlighted, greatly multiply. You could translate it that way. But we have several times in the Hebrew scriptures where our obey is lying in wait. And it's literally typed as like a lion crouching. So the great one lying in wait, he's the one that would cause. Only to her, no future generation, so it has nothing to do with childbirth. He would cause her. It's singular this pain and sorrow because God knew that it was going to cause one son to kill the other. Now, Paul, go keep it in context, Paul is warning you about that one that's going to be lying in wait. The devil is always lying in wait. And he tells you you're going to be wrestling against flesh and blood, not or not against flesh and blood, but against archons, powers, so he tells you right from the very beginning, take you the whole armor of God. And then he tells you to gird up your loins with truth. In other words, you need to know truly what happened. And then have on that breastplate of righteousness right over your heart to know to do what's right. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Having on your shoes, your feet, be willing to go and take the truth of Jesus Christ to the world. Then taking on the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Oh, he hates that faith, boy. When you have faith, when you believe God and you take God at His word, there's nothing that's impossible to you. Jesus said, whatsoever things you desire, that's earnestly crave, believe that you've received it. In other words, already envision it in your mind that you have it, and it shall be given to you. Take on the helmet of salvation. The helmet is the knowledge. The knowledge of your salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, 
because Jesus always used the word to defeat the enemy. Satan came to him and said, It's written, you, he shall give you, uh, uh, you know, or you can turn the stone, take, take and turn these stones to your hunger. You turn the stones into bread. Jesus said, It's written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Over and over and over, Satan come with him at, with the word and Jesus defeated him with the word. There's your sword. I hope this stuff blesses you this morning. God bless you. See you later this evening. And don't forget patreon.com. Uh, we that wonderful message over there. I'm actually fixing to be releasing that very soon here next day or so to you uh, here on Israeli News Live. But we appreciate you That's because that is the main way of supporting this ministry that people do is patreon.com it's only a dollar a month so it's the cheapest way too uh, but we do thank you especially those that are able to do a little bit more because the need is great and we appreciate you god bless you and thank you have a great day